Okay, welcome to Russia, turn four, Soviet Union, turn four. Um, so they're gonna, they have uh, 57 IPCs to spend. They're gonna spend two IPCs to move one of their minor factories. They're gonna spend 16 on four artillery, six on a tank, eight on, or uh, sorry, 24 on eight men, and they're gonna save nine, presumably for another turn. Uh, they do have some attacks that they're declaring, so let's start at the top of the map here. Uh, they will be sending three infantry from Novgorod into Karelia. They'll be sending three infantry from Novgorod into Vyborg. They'll be sending four infantry and one artillery uh, into the Baltic states. Uh, they will be sending uh, eight infantry and one artillery into Belarus. Uh, and they will be sending three infantry into western Ukraine along with... I think there's a, hang on one sec, I just have to put this on pause. Okay, sorry about that, continuing on. Um, uh, again, eight infantry, one artillery into Belarus. Um, four infantry, one artillery into the Baltic states, but also there is a fighter coming from Ukraine to the Baltic states. Now, it does not have to pass over these anti-aircraft guns. It can go one, uh, two, three and miss all the uh, German anti-aircraft. Because we're, remember, we're doing always on anti-aircraft. Uh, also, uh, the three infantry in uh, Ukraine are gonna be attacking Western Ukraine. And finally, over here in the east, two infantry and one artillery are gonna be attacking Jehol. So let's start uh, setting up some combats and rolling some dice. Okay, for the attack on Karelia, uh, the... Uh, Russians are coming in with three infantry, unsupported, and the Germans are defending with one infantry. No hits. Go Germany. Hit! Uh, and all these fights, by the way, according to my opponent, are to the death. So, two ones. No hits. Miss. Sorry. Miss. Miss. Hit. So he's going to win this battle. Miss. So Russia takes the territory with one casualty. Okay, with the same attack profile for Vyborg, three Russian infantry. Three misses. Hit. Exact same start, too. That's interesting. Hit. So he will take the territory. Miss. So exact same result as the Karelia battle. Russia takes territory with one casualty. Okay, for the Bryansk battle. Uh, there are eight Russian infantry coming in, six of which are unsupported, two of which are supported. I forgot to do this on one of the previous turns. It didn't make a difference in the dice rolls, but Russia has um, enhanced artillery, so each artillery can support two infantry. So they're going to get three rolls of three and six rolls of one. So six ones and three threes versus two twos. Two, five hits, so battle's over. But Germany does get to defend, and misses with both. So uh, Russia takes the territory, no casualties. Okay, battle for the Baltic states. The Russians are coming with four infantry and one artillery, so two unsupported and two supported, plus a fighter. Uh, and the Germans are defending with two infantry and a heavy tank. Now, this is going to be the first time that we see a heavy tank in our uh, custom rules, uh, defending. So remember that the tanks get two uh, hits. They can be damaged like battleships and carriers. So two ones, three twos, and a three. One hit. Not a strong start. So two twos and a three. No hits. Even worse start. So. Actually, you know what? No, I won't take that, obviously. Um, I will take the hit on the... 
That will take the hit on the um, uh, uh, tank. So uh, everybody rolls again. Two hits. So that's uh, two of these guys. So three twos. Two hits. Well, that's good. So, with that left, hit. So, this is destroyed. Okay, so the Russians lost two infantry and uh, destroyed the uh, all the German units and take back Baltic states without much of a problem. The final European battle, it's Western Ukraine, three infantry versus an infantry. Much quicker battle. And like all of these three versus one, Russia loses one infantry in taking the territory. Okay, in the final battle, Russia's liberating Jehol. Two infantry and an artillery. Both infantry supported because of the enhanced artillery. All misses. Miss. One hit, that's all they needed. Miss. So, uh, Russians take the territory with no casualties. Alright, non-combat moves for the uh, Russians. They're going to land the plane involved in the Baltic States attack back in Novgorod. Uh, they're going to take one infantry from Novgorod and rail it to Vologda, one infantry from Novgorod and rail it to Smolensk. Uh, they're going to take one infantry from Ukraine and walk it into Rostov, and then they will be moving all of the remaining forces in Ukraine to Bryansk, including the factory. They paid two IPCs to do that, so the factory will be in Bryansk now. Uh, continuing, the artillery piece in Russia is going to be railed the length of the uh, Trans-Siberian Railway to Amur. Uh, the forces in Amur, two infantry and one artillery, will move south to Manchuria. And all of the forces in Korea, this big stack of infantry, one tank and two anti-aircraft, will move to Manchuria as well. Um, I think that's it. Oh, sorry, no, there's not. Uh, these two planes, uh, the fighter and the tactical bomber that were on the American aircraft carriers, will fly uh, as well and join the rest of the Russian forces uh, congregating in Manchuria. So um, give me a sec to uh, tidy this up and we'll be back with uh, placement and um, uh, income. Okay, placement of new units in v Novgorod. We're going to put three new infantry and a new tank. In Volgograd, we're going to put three infantry and an artillery. In Moscow, we're going to put three artillery. And way over here in Amur, we're going to put two infantry. Uh, so we can do the changes to um, income. First and foremost, Jehol is uh, liberated for the Chinese. So we'll change Japan down from 35 to 34, China up 11 to 12. Uh, and then we do have some changes as well over here. Um, they have liberated Karelia for one, Vyborg for zero, Baltic states for one, so that's two, Belarus for one, so that's three, and Western Ukraine for two, so that's five. So, plus five Russia, minus five Germany. So Russia's at 33, it's going to go to 38. Germany was at 57, it's going to go down to 52. And um, that means the income situation is as follows. 37, or sorry, 38 base income. They kept nine from last turn, so that's 47. They get three for holding um, 
uh, Siberia, the Urals, and the Ukraine. Uh, they get five for holding Leningrad, Stalingrad, and the Baltic states. And that's it. Okay, so that's all the bonuses. Now, I do have to roll Lend Lease. So I will roll that, um, but I don't know which of the two choices he's going to choose. So I'm going to have to wait for his communication back, but I will roll the Lend Lease now. It's a two, which means one mech in Amur or Archangel. So I'm guessing he's going to put it in a moor, but uh, I will wait until I hear back from him. So uh, I will do the um, disposition of forces uh, once I hear back. He has got a new mech, but it's going in either a moor or Archangel. Okay, he went a different direction than I thought, and he wants his mechanized infantry placed in Archangel. So in our disposition of forces. Uh, in C-Zone 115, we have a cruiser and a submarine. In C-Zone 127, we have a destroyer and a submarine. In Karelia, two infantry. In Vyborg, two infantry. In Novgorod, one, two, three, four, five infantry, one tank, one fighter. Baltic states, um, two infantry, one artillery. Uh, Belarus, 8 infantry, 1 artillery, Archangel, 1 infantry, 1 mech infantry. Nenetsia, 1 infantry, Vologda, 1 infantry, Smolensk, 1 infantry, Russia, 3 artillery. Uh, moving down here, uh, Bryansk has moved the Ukraine factory, um, and uh, there is an artillery and a mechanized infantry along with 4 uh, any aircraft and I think I'm pretty sure it's 13 infantry. There's an infantry in Rostov and three infantry and an artillery in Volgograd. Moving east, we have in Amur uh, two infantry and one artillery. Uh, in Manchuria, quite a few infantry. Um, three, six, nine, twelve, seventeen infantry, two any aircraft. One tank, one artillery, one fighter, one tactical bomber in Jehol, one uh, artillery and two infantry. So, uh, the big question is, what does Japan do next? So, stay tuned.